So just welcome everyone to the 17th in a series of free webinars hosted by the Chamber of Commerce under the theme Supporting Businesses in a Time of Crisis. I'm Will Pino, I'm the CEO of the Chamber. The topic of this webinar is evolving your business into the post COVID-19 world. And today we are prepared, partnering with Savage Consulting, a business management consulting firm specializing in helping businesses transform and grow. The objective of this meeting is to provide businesses and individuals with overall guidance on how to review and revise your business strategy in order to get your business back to health. The session will provide practical guidance on how to assess the current health and viability of your business and how to revise and execute your business model to achieve a healthy business in a post-COVID-19 world. To guide us through today's session are Carla Artana and Eugene Nolan, whom I'll now introduce. Carlo Artana is a partner at Savage Consulting. He's an expert at this strategic planning process, meeting customer service goals in finance and business strategy, both in the US and EU travel, retail, and airport industries. He's a visionary in the creation and execution of customer-centric business plans and is equally passionate, analytical, and decisive. Carlo uses his vast knowledge of financial analysis and budget planning to transform businesses and help them grow. Eugene Nolan is a partner at Savage Consulting. He's a passionate customer experience advocate and an innovator with Caribbean-wide experience in operations management, finance operations, and business development. He helps uh, develop growth strategies and financial projections that will build brand loyalty growth profit margins, grow profit margins, and enhance efficiency. Eugene takes the frustration out of the technical aspects of business planning. So before I turn over to Eugene for the main presentation, let me remind you that you may submit your questions during the presentation via the chat feature. It'll also be the usual question and answer segment at the end of the presentation. And uh, we'll be taking your questions during this segment uh, there's a raised hand feature at the bottom of your screen, which allows you to indicate um, if you wish to ask a question, at which time we'll bring you up on the screen and unmute your microphone. So I'd just like to say thanks to both Eugene and Carlo for hosting this webinar. And right now I'll just turn it over to Eugene to begin the presentation. Good, Good morning, everyone. And thank you very much for that introduction, Will. And indeed, thank you to the Chamber for facilitating this webinar. webinar. As Will said, it's the 17th in the series. They've been doing a fantastic job uh, in helping us navigate our way through um, um, the COVID pandemic. Um, this morning, we're here to talk about evolving your business as we go through uh, COVID. And th this is very much a follow-up from a previous presentation from Berman Fisher on financial assistance and planning during COVID. Uh, the difference being what we're, what we're going to focus on today is very much the drivers and levers behind you know, what drives the financials in your business. Um, so just to kick off, um, uh, Will has already introduced Savage Consulting, so um, I, won't, I won't repeat that. Um, so if, if, if we start, um, most of you will probably recognize um, President Trump. He's probably one of the most optimistic people in the world. Uh, Q3 will be the best Q3 ever. Q4 will be the best quarter ever. Next year is going to be the best year ever. The coronavirus will go away. He's a very optimistic individual. Um, we don't want to talk about optimism today. Really, we want to focus on realism. We want businesses in Cayman to be realistic about the situation we're in, how that situation is going to evolve and what it means for your business and what you need to do about it. Um, so being realistic, let's, let, let's have a look at what's happening both globally and locally from an economic standpoint. Um, the OECD published um, a, a report a couple of days ago, June the 10th. Uh, where they stated the global economy is plunging into the worst peacetime recession in a century. Uh, when we look at what that means, the world economy is on a tightrope. As things currently stand, we're going to see significant reductions in GDP in the developed world, ranging from, you know, in the UK, 
anywhere between 12 and 14%, uh, the US 7 to 9%, uh, very significant reductions in GDP happening across the world. Uh, and it's still uncertain because there are a couple of scenarios. Um, a second outbreak may be avoided. If so, global GDP could regain its pre-COVID level by the end of 2021. That's in 18 months time. Or if we see a second wave uh, where COVID has already um, <clears throat> been in existence, that could push through to 2022 or beyond. So there, we're only at the beginning of the cycle of, of, of planning and changing um, for COVID related disruption to our business. Translating that back in, 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 into Cayman, uh, the Minister of Finance issued a statement a couple of weeks ago um, outlining what the potential worst case scenarios are for Cayman. This year, we could see up to a 12% GDP impact. We could see 9,500 job losses, of which 3,000 will be Caymanian, with an employment rate potentially going up to near 20%. Uh, and that's going to drive inflation from a current rate of almost 5% um, down to about half a percent by the end of the year, as there's downward pressure on pricing and margins. So that leads us to the question, how do we as businesses, small businesses, large businesses, how do we react to this situation? Uh, so that leads us into really why we're here today and what we're going to talk about uh, for the remainder of this webinar. Um, so we want to focus on four main areas of what we can do to protect our businesses um, during, during, through and beyond uh, COVID. Number one is doing an assessment, really a reassessment of our businesses, where they stand today, what the new challenges are that COVID brings, what it means from an overall market point of view, what it means from our operations perspective, and what it means to our financials. We then want to do a bit of replanning. <clears throat> do we need to revise our business model? Do we need to throw out the business plan that we were operating under pre-COVID? Do we need to write a new one? Do we need to amend it? We want to identify those key actions that we need to take to ensure our businesses can be sustainable through, um, through, the, through the downside brought by COVID. Um, and and we, we very much espouse having a big focus on customer experience transformation as we do that. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Number three, uh, as, as Berman Fisher so eloquently kind of expressed to us a few weeks ago, um, you know, we highly recommend reforecasting budgets for the next 18 months and beyond based on the assessment and the planning that we've already done. Understand what are the impact on our revenues, what the impact on our costs are going to be, and how that's going to play out in our, in, our, in our operations over the next 18 months. And finally, we want to execute the plan and indeed the budget that we want to put in place. So let's start and dive in in a little bit more detail into the first phase, the assessment phase, looking at our key business challenges. There are a number of different things and, and different businesses will be on a different maturity scale um, you know, when, when, when we start examining where we are now and where we're going. But we'll start off by looking at our market positioning, looking at the products and services that we were selling and potentially can still sell and offer to customers. We do need to consider market segmentation. That is changing. Um, what, are, what are our sales and marketing capability like? How good is our customer experience? understanding and doing a SWOT analysis, understanding our strengths, our weaknesses, our threats, and indeed our opportunities. And last but not least, leading all that into a financial assessment of where our business is like and how our business is likely to perform over the coming 18 months. So just taking some of those um, key steps one at a time. Um, understanding our market. It's very important for us to understand the market in which we are now operating and are likely to operate in. So how many competitors do we have? How strong are our competitors versus us? What pricing differential do we have? 
What differential do we have in customer experience? What's happening from a regulatory perspective if that impacts us? What are the demographic trends? So as we're losing a significant element of our workforce and a lot of people are leaving Cayman, does that change the demographics of our target customer base? And what does that impact look like from a financial perspective? What are technology trends? We'll talk more about that, the evolution to a more digital way of working. Um, how are our customer needs changing? And what uncertainties are there out there? And there are a lot of moment, as we know. When we think about the products and services we offer today, we need to evaluate how relevant they still are in the marketplace. You know, as an example, um, if, we're, if, if we develop and market and sell products directly to the tourist market, that's going to be pretty quiet for the next few months. So we need to consider you know, how can we adjust that. So when we look at the products and services we've got, um, let's just kind of think about, you know, as we're devising it, you know, a customer will explain the product and service they want in one way. Now, our team will probably design it a slightly different way. The business consultants, you know, will add some bells and whistles uh, and nice sunshine to it. But what the customer really needs is what we need to get to. Um, and, and really something that, you know, we'd like you to take away is, you know, when you think about your products and services, is, is don't find customers for your products. Don't find customers for your services. Find products and services for your customers that they want and they need. Look at the pricing of your products and services. Analyze your competition. Uh, understand how they're pricing similar products. Understand what people now can and are willing to pay. Uh, and be very aware of impacts to your margin. Use industry standards um, to manage your margin base, but always be aware of impact to margin on your pricing. And, and of course, you know, very importantly, be all over your costs. Understand the cost drivers behind your business um, as we move forward. Segmentation. Segmentation is evolving um, during COVID due to the changes in our population that we're going to see for the months ahead. So we need to understand who are we targeting um, for the products and services that we sell? Is that changing? Do we need to change and evolve with it? So for example, there might be you know, a large segment of the market that, that, that we currently serve that have had to leave due to COVID. So what does that mean for our business? Are there other demographics we should go after? We need to assess how we market our products and services in our businesses. Because again, marketing channels are changing. A very strong marketing channel in Cayman pre-COVID was the cinema with a very captive audience. Right now, that's not available. Print newspapers, as I'm sure most of you are aware, um, right now there are no print newspapers. The Cayman Compass have announced that as things get back to normal, they're only going to print on a Friday not Monday to Friday as they previously did. So that channel becomes less applicable over time. Radios remain very, radio stations uh, remain very applicable, as does more and more social media and direct email to, con to consumers or businesses. Talking a bit about social media, don't underestimate the importance of social media. Companies who respond on social media to customer comments and questions um, spend up to 40% more with, with, you, with your company. And a failure to respond to comments, questions, queries on social media can lead to a significant increase in churn to your competitors. Then you've got to think about your, 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 your sales channels. Just looking at pre-COVID in the US, um, we're seeing tremendous growth, as you would expect, to non-store retailers, i.e. online for example, Amazon. That is now overtaken general stores, grocery stores as, as the main channel in the US. So what does that mean for us here in Cayman? We know from an e-commerce point of view, and last week there was an excellent presentation on e-commerce, you know, the volumes in e-commerce transaction across particularly predominantly retail sectors, you know, has gone up 
75% in the last 12 months. So kind of putting that together, um, really think about um, what channels you want to use to sell your services and products. COVID is forcing us to rethink our physical stores. And in Cayman, it's been very much, you know, business is conducted very much in a face-to-face -face, uh, environment. That's no longer as possible. Even as the economy opens up, there are still restrictions. There is physical and social distancing that need to be adhered to, face masks. Um, so, you know, are people still going to come into your stores and offices in the volume they did pre-COVID? Highly unlikely. And it takes longer. So it's a worse customer experience. So how can we evolve to a more online presence? And as we involve, evolve to online presence and e-commerce, it's important that we ensure everything we do is mobile responsive. So now over 60% of online purchasing and browsing is done through mobile devices today rather than laptops, desktops. Uh, and social media. Social media is not just good for advertising, it's also very good for selling. Um, and you know, a couple of very important stats. If you don't have a good website, um, your customers are going to go to one of your competitors. Um, 60%, 61% of users are unlikely to return to a site they have trouble accessing. They will move to a competitor. So we really need to think about the evolution of the digital economy and how that can help your business as we, as we manage our way through this crisis. Customer experience, why does this matter? It links employees and customer engagement to business performance. You know, good employee engagement, happy customers, lower churn. Customers want to be communicated with, even when things aren't going well. They want to be kept informed. And in, in a lot of the research that we do here in Cayman, that's the number one thing that comes out, is I quite like company ABC, um, but company ABC never keep me up to date. I ordered something two weeks ago. I have to keep calling them. Um, so really think about, you know, how you want to treat your customers, put yourselves in their shoes. 82% of people, customers left a company because of a poor service experience. And you know, there's a great example here, you know, right now, a very topical uh, uh, subject is, is pensions and pension refund. And we have some great pension companies and, and some that if you examine social media would appear not to be performing as well. What will happen post COVID? People are more likely to move their business to those that they perceive have done a lot better. So really think about, you know, social media itself will drive a lot of discussion on how well different companies are doing. 86% of customers will pay more for a better experience. You can charge a premium if you have the best service. Now assessing your customer experience you know, there's many different ways of doing it. Um, social media engagement is a great one to take temperature checks. See what people are saying about you on social media. Very quick and easy to do. You can do surveys, you can do focus groups, you can, you can have instant feedback. Um, but, you know, we, we strongly recommend that you talk to your customers in one of these ways. Understand what they're saying about you and understand what they're saying about your competitors. So you can, you can steal a competitive advantage. Next step, prepare a SWOT analysis. Critically examine your strengths. Be realistic. Look at your weaknesses. Look at what opportunities are available to you. There will be opportunities coming out of COVID. You know, production of face masks. Um, there's a lot more opportunities there now than there was pre-COVID, as an example. And threats. There's not just threats today, such as physical distance, social distancing, what my competitors are doing, but what threats are coming down the line? What happens if there's a second wave and we have to go back into partial or full lockdowns again? We need to consider those and what, what the impact on our business will be. Um, and do a financial assessment. Uh, and, and to repeat what, what Berman Fisher took us through a few weeks ago. Um, if you don't have financial statements, get all your banking information and 
prepare financial statements or get assistance to help you. If you do have financial statements, analyze them in detail. Cash is king. During any crisis, those businesses that have liquidity are the ones that will be able to survive and see out the crisis. If you look at the airline industry, which is suffering massively worldwide, those airlines with very strong balance sheets are the ones that are going to be able to ride through this crisis without seeking government handouts, etc. Summarizing all of that, you know, we would suggest putting a little matrix together. Having done the analysis of how well are we doing from a sales point of view, a marketing point of view, what are our challenges, what are our customer experience challenges, what are our competitors doing? Let's map that in a matrix and understand where we stand relative to our competitors. So we can really focus on changing our business so that we can, we can steal a march on our competitors. So taking that information, let's just kind of move forward now and discuss, okay, we have all this information, what are we going to do with it? And this is where we talk about discussing uh, and redeveloping um, our operating plan, uh, understanding the impacts that COVID has, has brought to us, how can we use those impacts to, to define our go forward plan? Um, so let's do this by asking us a few questions. Let's ask ourselves some key questions and let's re realistically answer those. So here's some of the key questions that we need to ask ourselves. Now that we have a strong understanding of the market, uh, of the products and services that we can sell, how much of our products and services can we sell? How much can we sell next month, the month after, the month after that? What do we think the market can sustain? Who can we sell it to? Who are my key segments? What demographics am I chasing? What will be the costs to me to sell it? How much will it take me to produce a product or indeed a service that I'm selling onto a customer? How much will it cost me to sell that product? Understanding our cost base at all times. How will I market it? What marketing channels am I going to use? And how much will I need to spend to market my products and services? A key question. Another key question is understanding what will my customer experience look like? What do I want it to be? What do my customers want it to be? How can I be ahead of the game? And then how can I manage my performance? So overall, how can I, on a weekly, daily, weekly, monthly basis, ensure that I'm understanding how well I'm doing versus how well I thought I would do? From the sales and marketing point of view, let's put together a comprehensive plan. So making sure we have the staffing right, we're using the right channels, we're really pushing social media, um, and we're measuring both our costs and, and the returns we're getting there. But also, the other question and the plan we need to come up with is we need a COVID plan. So we need to understand in our business what happens if one of our employees tests positive. We're seeing that, you know, on a, you know, almost daily basis, one institution or another announces an employee tested positive. Here are the steps we're taking. You know, um, we're contact tracing, we're doing extra cleansing, etc. This could happen to any of us. You know, fortunately, you know, in Cayman, um, most of the results are asymptomatic. Um, but, you know, we still need to exercise caution. And if we're able to communicate our COVID plan to our customers, that gives confidence to them that we're doing all, taking all the right steps to safely provide our products and services. Having asked these questions and answered them to ourselves, let's now turn this and create our budget. So using that information, let's reforecast our revenues. Let's look at what our cost baseline now is and understand our budget. So what does that look like? Um, first off, you know, prepare a 12 to 18 month budget. You know, we know what our historical sales are. We've now done you know, a key exercise in understanding our market, understanding the products and services that we can sell in the current market, uh, understanding our pricing, understanding how much of it we can sell. Let's start turning that into numbers. Now, as well as the budget, it's really important to build a cash flow. Uh, cash flow 
how much are we paying out when, how much are we receiving in when. Uh, it's really important to understand both um, you know, as we go forward. Um, and, and just a kind of reminder, you know, as we redo our budget, you know, this is a budget template. You know, what would our product sales be on a monthly basis? What, what's the cost to produce those products or services that we sell? What are our fixed expenses? What does that mean from a profitability point of view? Understanding that on a month-to-month -month basis. And the same for cash flow. Let's understand our cash outflows, our cash inflows, uh, the timing of those, so we can understand what our cash position, forecast our cash position, and what that's going to be uh, during, during this budget period. So to try and kind of connect the dots between what we've just been discussing, so we've asked ourselves a number of questions. How much of our products can we sell? That goes directly to the revenue line in our budget. We understand what the COVID impact on our sales will be. We can look at launching or launching new products and we can adjust existing products. Um, so all of that work that we've done will give us forecast and budgeted revenue numbers. Now there are a number of actions we need to take. You know, we, need to, we need to understand um, how the COVID situation is impacting our business. Um, we need to look at new, potential new channels. So for example, going online. And you know, a great example of that is you know, when the lockdowns and curfews started and came in most of our supermarkets, you, know, you couldn't shop online. And then they were scrambling to try and introduce online capabilities uh, during that. Had that been in place beforehand, that would have been a very viable option from day one, online shopping and delivery. Um, so these are things we need to think about. All these questions and actions that we've come up with go directly to our revenue line. Um, understanding our cost of goods. So how much is it costing us um, to produce our products or services? How much is it costing us to sell those? Right? Key actions we need to take, negotiate better deals. Right? You know, most businesses understand that we are in a crisis. Uh, it is putting downward pressure on pricing. Uh, we're going to face downward pressure in our pricing. We need, to, we need to equally negotiate better deals with our suppliers you know, and put downward pressure on their pricing. We need to be very, very smart with inventory. Let's not build up a huge amount of inventory, which is going to sit on our balance sheet and not um, get sold to customers. So, you know, during this period, um, we should be very circumspect about how we manage inventory. Having kind of forecast that, that gives us our gross profit. Then let's look at our operating expenses. How much does it cost? What are my expenses? What do I need to do? You know, in some instances, it might mean temporarily or indeed permanently downsizing my operation to allow us to survive, um, to solidify, and then get back to a period of growth as the economies, both ours and indeed in the rest of the world, start improving. Um, also, really consider customer experience. How can we use our customer experience to give us a competitive differentiator? <clears throat> So having built our budget and kind of gone through a number of logical steps to get to that budget by understanding our market, by asking ourselves key questions and answering those, turning them into numbers, which translate to our budget, that gives us a budget plan and it gives us a bunch of actions that we need to take. So to kind of close out this planning cycle, um, Let's just kind of document what are our key priorities? What key actions do we need to take when? And, and with a real emphasis on, on prioritization. If there's a hundred things we need to do, we won't get them all done next week. So we need to pick those key items that are most important to our business in different phases. So, you know, we would suggest breaking out for each phase a number of key tasks and, and prioritizing when we execute those tasks. And then 
having something. This can be done on pieces of paper, it can be done on kind of fancy charts, there's many different ways to do this. Um, but let's manage our way through very systematically, ticking off our actions as we go along, because they're what are driving the changes to our business. Very important to measure what we're doing. Um, and, and, you know, in good times, you know, in our experience working with businesses in Cayman is there's not a lot of measurement. There's money in my bank account, things must be fine. Uh, at times like this, it becomes even more important to con constantly measure how we're doing. How are we, how, how's our revenue doing? Are we selling what we said we were going to sell in the channels we said we were going to sell them, you know, versus the budget we set? Let's check that daily. Let's check that weekly. Let's check that monthly. So we can take actions if we're behind or if we're ahead. Does that mean we need to push harder? Does that mean that there's more opportunity? So being all over our numbers is very, very important. Let's measure our marketing effectiveness. If we're spending money on marketing. Is it driving engagement? So are we getting engagement on social media? Are we converting that engagement to sales? If we are, you know, we can evaluate if that's money well spent. If it's not, and one of the beauties of, in particular, using social media mediums is it's very quick to change out. Uh, and it's, it's relatively inexpensive. And our operating costs, you know, we have a number of fixed cost lines. How are our costs performing against those? Are our staff costs higher or lower? Um, are our supplier costs higher or lower? Shipping costs higher or lower? Let's understand how our costs are doing. Are we on plan or behind plan? Yeah, at a minimum monthly. Let's evaluate our customer experience. Let's measure it. Let's understand. Let's ask our customers, are we doing the job for you, you know, that gives you the best experience or could we do better? And, and, and on that, you know, a one point increase in customer satisfaction leads to up to an 8% increase in sales. That's how important customer experience is. And then on our initiative tracking, you know, let's evaluate and ensure that we're doing the tasks we said we were going to do. And finally, managing risk. Let's understand what risk is out there. What could go wrong? Let's do some what if scenario planning. Right? Um, and we recommend every business has a risk register. And on that risk register, we kind of list the key areas um, where things could change. A, a huge risk, um, as, as we saw from the OECD, if there is a second wave of COVID, what is that going to mean? What would we need to do if that were to occur so that we're ahead of the game? Um, you know, let's understand the severity of that risk, the likelihood of that risk. So, you know, in that, in that example, if there's a second wave of COVID, that's going to push out the economic recovery well past the end of 2021 into and beyond 2022. Um, other examples, staffing, we might lose staff to illness, COVID related. Um, what, what's that going to mean for our operations? If we have to isolate some members of our staff, how can we keep operations going? Um, you know, that's a fairly active scenario today for a number of businesses. Then, you know, other risk areas, our costs are behind plan, or our revenues are behind plan. These are some examples of some risks that we face. So to summarize, number one message uh, from us today is to be realistic. You know, optimism is great and it's good to be optimistic. We don't want to be pessimistic, but we really want to, to just be as realistic as possible. What can and is likely to happen, right? Um, so we're prepared to deal with it accordingly. And to summarize how, smart planning of our businesses, assessing where we are today, where the market is today, uh, where our financials are today, planning where they're going to go and adjusting our business operations accordingly, focusing on customer experience, uh, creating or reforecasting existing budgets, uh, revenues, costs, profit, not forgetting cash flow. Uh, 
and finally executing the plan that we've created. Thank you very much for listening. Um, Will, we can now open to any questions. Okay, great. Thank you for your presentation, Eugene. I, I guess I'll start just simply asking you, um, do you really think businesses are taking this pandemic as seriously as they, they ought to? I mean, I get a sense of calm in the community rather than panic. Um, yeah. do, you, do you think uh, small businesses are quietly suffering? Or, or what, what do you think is happening out there? Well, that's a, that's a, that's a, it's a brilliant question. Um, and what, what we think, and indeed what we see happening, um, when, when the pandemic kind of started and our lockdown started in mid-March, it never felt like it was going to be long-term. Economists worldwide were talking about a V-shaped recovery. Um, it will all be over soon. You know, we had a lot from our kind of, you know, the US, very positive messages coming out. The reality is starting to bite now. But the, the real reality we feel won't bite for another month or so. Um, so we think people have been too optimistic just assuming that when the economy reopens, everything will be fine. Um, and so we think crunch time is in about a month's time when businesses really realize, oh my God, where are these customers gone? Why am I not selling these products anymore? Why are people not coming into my store? Um, and it's all because of, you know, the factors surrounding unemployment um, is going up. People are leaving Ireland. So disposable income is going down. Um, so the amount of cash in the economy is much lower. So, 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 so generally, you know, we're finding businesses are very nervous. They're not quite sure what's going to happen, but they haven't kind of felt the hard punches yet. And, and they're about to come. Does, does, does that answer your question? It does. And the other thing is uh, a lot of people suffer silently, <laughs> if that's the right way. Um, they, they, they tend to be a bit too proud to admit that they need help. Yes. So you're, a firm like yours, right, is there to help, right? That's what this presentation is about. Absolutely, Will. And I think like, we're finding the same things talking to kind of existing clients. You know, that they're, they're worried about, look, we know we need help, but we don't know how we're going to be able to pay for it. Uh, there's government schemes. You know, we work with clients and we say, let's find a way. We're all in this together. Um, you know, um, for, for the smaller micro businesses, a number of incentive schemes are already in place. Um, then there's the next swathe of businesses, revenues of $750,000 upwards, you know, while nothing has been announced yet, um, you know, hopefully we'll see some incentives in place for those types of businesses. But, you know, we would say reach out, you know, don't hesitate in reaching out, reach out to the chamber, reach out to the CI. CBD, reach out to firms like us, Berman Fisher, have the discussion. Um, because unfortunately, you know, if, 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 if we do put the blinkers on, um, you know, unfortunately, we're going to see businesses not come through this. And we want to avoid that as much as possible. And say, uh, obviously, one of the first things that businesses should be doing is consulting closely with their banker, right? If particularly, right? So, what role will you play, your business play, if they work with you uh, in terms of the banks? Yeah, it's a great question. And you know, what, what, what banks are looking for is a level of confidence that you know, you understand the levers and drivers of your business and how that's translating into future performance. So if you go to your banker and you present them with a new budget and a cash flow that shows I'm going to be negative here, 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 here. You know, I see it turning around here based on the kind of economic indicators. Um, that gives them a lot of confidence that you know what's driving your business. They're then more likely to give you credit. They're, they're going to insist to see business plans, forecasts, but they're going to want realism in them. Um, so that's, you know, the role we play is helping you. And that's really the point of this presentation. It's kind of trying to take the the technicalities out of financial planning and understanding the drivers and levers behind it. Because finances and cash flow is all driven by the types of products you can sell and the types of costs that you've got. So kind of really understanding those properly and how that's going to evolve over the coming months, you know, allows you to have a picture of your business that you can sit and talk to your banker about 
and agree, right, here's what we can do. Do your bank, here's how I'm willing to help and support you. And you said cash flow is king during this time, obviously, and controlling your expenses and, and certainly your, um, the amount of inventory you have if you're that type of business. Um, you know, what, what would you say that, say, a this small business has, you know, $100,000 that they're owing to their different vendors? You know, what kind of plan should they come up with in order to, they still have staff expenses, they're still trying to keep the doors open, they're still trying to pay their rent. What advice would you give them with their vendors in particular? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a great question again. You know, there's, there's two sides. Uh, um, I'm going to expand the answer to your question a little bit, Well, uh, Let's talk about our payables first, particularly our aged payables. What do we, what do we owe today to our vendors? Um, reaching out to those vendors. Uh, you know, we're, we're doing this all the time now on behalf of clients. We're reaching out to vendors saying, Look, right now we don't have cash. Here are the reasons why. They understand that. We're agreeing payment plans. We're agreeing different ways um, of clearing our aged debt. The flip side too is on receivables. So what do people owe us? Um, because they're having the same problem. So we might, you know, particularly a business that invoices and might have payment terms of 30 days or 15 days, etc. cetera. Um, we're facing the same problem in that area. How do we work with those um, customers who owe us money but can't afford to pay today? We don't want to turn that into bad debt. Right? So if we have to find a way where you know, we agree a payment plan such that that debt can be absolved over a six month period, a nine month period, a 12 month period, whatever works between the parties. The key message is, you know, don't bury your head in the sand and think the problem will go away. Uh, and, and you made this point earlier, William, we, we, we do see this, you know, that people are just kind of assuming the problem when goes away. It doesn't go away. Start the conversation, start them early, let your vendors know. You know, everyone knows what's going on around the world. They will be surprisingly receptive where they can be. It's in their interest to work with you. Um, for them, you know, collecting zero cents on the dollar doesn't help their businesses. So it's in their interest to work with you to get their hundred cents on the dollar. Over to when, and what about the whole issue about, um, you know, many, many businesses, um, it becomes a more of an emotional argument than a realistic argument. And it's, they, they take their business. So obviously everyone takes their businesses very seriously. And it's almost like a baby that they've given birth to, particularly those micro businesses that have come up into medium sized businesses. But when, when do you recommend that somebody really should call it quits? You know, the reality is there isn't any hope for the business. And what is the process that you would guide them through in really winding up the business? Yeah, look, it, 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 as the song goes, you know, know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Uh, and, and, it, and it's really important. Um, weeks I'll use that to prop my business up. Uh, the, the first thing to do is, is to evaluate, can we get through this crisis? You know, what, what, what's my cash position today? What's my debt position today? How is that likely to change over the coming months? If it's clear that the business isn't viable, it's, it's time to start the wind down process. Uh, and, you know, it's very difficult conversation to have. Um, with a client, it's a very difficult conversation for a business owner to have to make that decision. But it is the right decision to make long term to kind of protect um, yourself personally as much as anything else. And, and, and it's to do it systematically. You've got to reach out to your customers and let them know what's happening. You've got to try and collect whatever receivables are outstanding so you can clear as much of your debt as possible. The debt doesn't go away. Depending what type of firm you, you know, and how large you are, it might be time to call in the receivers. Um, so a lot of it will depend on the type of business. But for the very small business, you know, it's do the analysis, meet your debtors and creditors, and wind it down. Okay. So again, uh, we have just recently had a really good 
webinar with some tourism businesses. And obviously we know that there's gonna be a protracted length of time for those, some of those businesses to get back and up and running. Um, and some of those businesses are gonna have a difficult time transitioning to other types of businesses, right? So, so again, uh, I guess the, the point I'm trying to, uh, I guess I'm asking you as, as a consultancy firm is, you know, how do you guide those types of businesses into, you know, some reality of the situation? I mean, reality is unless, unless you're a small business where you can take it, you can close off your office. Maybe you had an office, you can take it at home, you can do online, you can do most of the stuff online now through social media or whatever. You have a small staff, you can start streamlining your staff. Um, but what, uh, what other things, what way do you put them in a holding pattern, so to speak, yeah. while they weather this storm? Yeah, and, and look, there, there's, there, there's two approaches. You know, number one, if you're in the position where you can shutter your business, you know, for six months, nine months, um, you know, until your segments of the market recovers, um, you know, that's a good position to be in. You want to stop the cash bleed as quickly as possible. You've got to nip that in the bud. Um, if you've got assets, you could potentially look to sell those assets, right? Um, so to at least allow you to kind of um, clear any outstanding debt. Um, so for example, if I was a, you know, a small boat operator uh, doing tours to Stingray City, maybe I'd have to sell my equipment now, you know, to kind of help me close the business down and reevaluate further down the road. Um, so, so, you know, it's, it, it's hard to answer with because you've got to look at it for each individual business. But, you know, in, a, in an ideal world, if you've got no revenues coming in and, and none likely in the foreseeable future, three months, four months, six months, um, you need to find a way to pause your business. And, and that has knock on social impacts, you know, that's thing adding to unemployment. Um, you know, what happens to people with no income coming in? Um, difficult decisions, but, but, you know, sometimes, you know, necessary. So you've got to look at the opportunity to shutter your business with the hope to be able to restart it when, when the marketplace is there for you to sell your products or services. Uh, or, you know, the, the alternative, which is to shut your business and close it down. Um, mm -hmm. So um, it, I guess it's open for questions. I don't see too many hands raised or anything in the chat. So again, maybe you've answered, Eugene, you've answered most of the questions, I guess, through your presentation. You've done such a good job. But if anybody has a question that you'd like to pose, please uh, put your hand up and we'd be more than happy to I'll unmute your mic and if you want to answer it, ask it that way, or you can also put it in the chat. So I allowed everyone to unmute their mics if you want to. So again, this will be the final, final call for questions. All right, well, it, maybe you seem to have answered most people's questions then, Eugene. Um, so I'd like to say thank you for your presentation, really. And um, just, oh, hold on, we may have something here. Question, there is a question. There we go, we got a couple of questions. Okay, uh, am, I, am, I, am I unmuted? I think I am. There's something about the size of inventory? Question? From, from Mark. Um, yeah. What inventory levels would you suggest in terms of Mark, it's, it, 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 it's a really good question. You know, when, when you're kind of considering the inventory, um, you've got to consider it in light of your forecast and what you think you can sell into the market. Um, and, you know, because of the uncertainty of the market, you know, we would more likely than not be suggesting to you that you operate on a kind of a just in time basis, as opposed to a you know, have the stock in case I will sell it. Only buy what you know you're going to sell, bring it in and try and do it on a very timely basis. So if I know that, you know, on a weekly basis, I'm going to sell 50 widgets, 
I'm, I'm buying in those 50 widgets on a weekly basis, as opposed to buying a thousand widgets, um, you know, up front. Now you have to look at the cost implications of that, of course. If it's 50% cheaper to buy double the volume, it might make more sense from a cost point of view. Um, but ordering bi-weekly, absolutely, Mark, yes, it, 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 it would have, because it's helping you manage your costs as well. You know, inventory is something you really don't want to want to get caught out on. Uh, and if you take your current inventory, um, you know, you could do an aged aged view on it. So if you've got $100,000 in inventory, how much of that inventory, you know, have you had for more than 30 days, 60 days, 90 days? And it might be that you need to do a, almost a fire sale to get rid of that inventory if there's, if there's no other way of doing it. But very much, Mark, you know, to your question, very much based on the demand, you know, we would be saying take a take a cautious approach based on the demand, just in time reordering. You know, and if you see that demand increasing, you know, and and you know your cash position is good, you know, and there's some cost benefits to increasing that, great. But but start kind of cautious. But I, I hope that answers your question, Mark. It also depends on whether the items that you're ordering are essential items or luxury items, right? I mean, the reality is um, cash is going to be really tight, but there'll always be in, in, a, in, a, in a difficult economy, there'll always be people that actually spend, to be honest with you. They're, they're the ones that have cash savings and they use this as an opportunity to maybe get that new television that they always wanted or because prices will come down. I know right now the automotive industry is in a bit of a flux. So you're going to be seeing some incredible deals on cars right now over the next six months as they begin to clear the inventory. So there'll be some great sales going on there as well. But you, you can't hold on to too much inventory. The reality is unless uh, your product is a demand item product. Very, and very then the other thing we're seeing challenges with is just getting product into the country right now. I mean, with the shipping, the shipping and, and airlines, and there's there's some challenges in that regard as well. There are, and, and, and in fairness, they've done a, you know, considering the circumstances, a very good job, you know, the Port Authority Customs, um, you know, they have been churning through things quite well. Um, obviously, there's reduced, you know, air cargo coming in. Um, but, you know, we've got shipments coming in. You know the clearance processes have 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 kind of held up reasonably well, but there are delays, and yeah. and I think this is you know we talk about managing customer expectations, whereas before we might have been able to offer a two-day turnaround for widget A, it might be that's a five-day turnaround today, and as long as we set the right expectation, it's there. But but you know very much inventory based on demand. You know be clear on your demand, drive your inventory based on demand. All right, well, if there are no other questions, um, I'll open it up a little bit longer, but uh, if there are no other questions, I'd just like to say thank you, Eugene and Carlo, for hosting us, uh, this wonderful presentation. It's been really good information. As I said before, you can, if you wanted to review some of the information that's been shared, you can go to the Chamber COVIDupdates.ky website, and this recording will be posted there by this afternoon as well as their presentation. And feel free to call either Eugene or Carlo if, if you're a business that is really needs some help. I mean, that's what we're doing these webinars for. I mean, we're trying to put people in touch with experts who can get you through this crisis. Um, just like I, we were talking about earlier, it's, it's not going away. <laughs> you know, we wish it would, but the reality is it's going to be around for probably six to 10 months. It's a long haul, particularly for tourism. Tourism's not gonna look like it did when it reopens. Remember, it's like I, I was telling people in previous webinars, it's almost like in January, we we're, all, we're all concerned about the traffic. Remember traffic? We were all worrying about traffic and housing prices were going through the roof and it was difficult to get affordable house, housing. and. We're going into a building boom a little bit, and you know we had record numbers of work permits, and you know we were all on sailing a ship that we thought was was on on a great course, and then suddenly we got a sucker punch in March, and look at it, 
you know, we're looking at a situation, could we have ever imagined that unemployment in Cayman for Caymanians could get as high as 15%? Could we, would, could we ever have imagined that? Probably not. So reality is if your business is, is struggling and you need help, look for experts to help you try not to suffer in silence because that's not gonna help you or your business to get through this crisis. So thanks again, Eugene and Carlo, and I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks very much indeed. Bye now.